ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Tonight Show with Harold Marcus. Today I have a very special guest joining me. Please welcome Colonel Graf, ex-head of the IS Battle School and tutor to Ender Wigan. Thank you for having me, Harold. So Colonel, now that you're no longer part of the IF or head of Battle School, what are you turning your efforts on to? What, what are you pursuing in your career? Well, nothing much really. Uh, I'm no longer the head of the school, but I'm still a senior representative of the IF because I want to go out into the uh, world and represent them because they've always respected me and I've worked there for many years. So I'm not a head of the school anymore, but I'm still a part of the uh, administration. Interesting. So in your career as the head of the IF, were there any interesting events or highlights in your time serving there? Would any of the students do anything strange? Well, it was a great experience to be honest because it included many responsibilities and duties. But uh, I was able to witness the next generation overcome a very important battle to save the human race. And uh, the main highlight would be how I trained Ember Riggin to be one of the best commanders ever and saving the human race. The way he trained and worked hard with the humans it was a great achievement for the battle school and for the IF, so that's what stands out to me. Interesting. So, how is Ender doing now? There were some speculations that you were abusing your power or treating him unfairly. What do you have to say against these allegations against you? Do you think you behaved fairly? Oh, Ender's doing great. He's been quickly climbing up the rankings at the IF, and he's almost at my position where I was at. Well, that's great to hear, but what about the allegations that you were treating him unfairly? Oh no, that's not really a thing, you know, Ender's fine, it was just a normal training for the war and the media just likes to fluff it up, makes it into a story. It was the appropriate protocols needed to be completed to create a successful commander, so I wouldn't really, no, it's not really anything. That may be true, but Ender was just a child. Do you really think it was appropriate to use him as a tool of war like that? Well, you see, Ender was one of a kind. We did not use him as a tool. We taught him how to use his skills appropriately for war. But what he was going through was severe psychological pain, and he was put in tough situations almost every day at some points. That's not training. That's abusing your power. He can stop you, and he knew he had to go through it. The whole concept of using a child like that is really debatable. Well, like I said, you know, he's one of a kind. Let me be clear. Did you, at any point, use Ender as a tool of war to your advantage just because he was a child. I have already presented my thoughts. Sir, answer the question. Did you ever use Ender as a tool because he was a child? No comment. Be real here. The whole nation is watching and this is something that has been important for a long time. Sir, answer the question. Okay, I did some things I maybe shouldn't have done. He was a child, so it was easy to control him and make him a good general. Yes, Ender was a child, so it was easy. I know, I know that. But I couldn't help myself. I wanted to leave my mark on the battle school before I was leaving. Like, so I wanted this kid to be the greatest commander ever. So I'm going to admit, I used him to some extent. Well, you heard it from that himself, folks. Anyway, now that we've got that dirty issue out of the way, What's been going on at Battle School? What has the IF been up to recently? Well, they've been pretty active in terms of training more commanders for potential fu future battles and wars. There hasn't been any significant wars since the last big one, so we've been doing some different experiments for research purposes to see how different tactics work out and how children would behave in different situations. So it's more of a development plan right now. So you've been abusing your power over children again, eh? Actually, no. Andrew's training the commanders who initially started out with them at the uh, launch group, so he's doing the work now. So, are you not intervening with the affairs anymore? Well, I'm only a symbol of the IF now. No, I'm just an ambassador. I've handed the torch to the next generation already. So, if you had the power to intervene still, would you do so? Hmm, probably not. It's a tactic that's worked successfully before, and besides, they're experimenting with new tactics, meaning we may not always be using children. Now that you're no longer part of battle school, what do you plan to do with your life? Do you have anything in store for yourself? Well, I really don't know. I'm at a point where I just do whatever life throws at me. It's been a pleasure to be head of the battle school, and it's great that life has allowed me to stay involved with the IF. So, I hear you've recently released a memoir. Yes, I have actually. It's called War and Power, and it's available at all chapters and Indigo stores, as well as on Amazon. Well, it was a pleasure speaking with you, Colonel Graf. Thank you for your time.
It's been a pleasure to be here, sir, held Marcus. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back after a short break. Next up on One on One with Harold Marcus, Locke and Demo Sapphire. This coffee is not very good. Try this. Oh wow, that's good coffee. Where did you get it? I got it from Starbucks. Just like the mug says, you should go to Starbucks too. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Sit Down with Harold Marcus. Now, I know there are many mixed opinions about the abrupt and shocking conclusion to the Bugger War, but no one can deny the serious political upheaval surrounding the subjects, especially within the past few months. Tonight, I have with me two of the most famous political commentators of today, although strangely they have chosen to remain anonymous. Joining us over Ansible chat tonight will be Demosethens and Locke. Uh, made popular by the webs. Please introduce yourselves so our audience can recognize your voices. Uh, my name is Locke. Hello, my name is Demo Seffens. Alright, thank you. Now, before we start, I have to know, how did you decide on your pseudonyms? They must have some meaning behind them, correct? Well, my name is derived from the democratic activist John Locke. He believed that all people were born equally, in a time where prejudice was rampant during the 1600s. Many saw him as a fair and composed voice of reason. This is what I aspire to be. My alias, Demos Athens, is the name of a great rhetorician that provided unique insight into politics. Just like Locke, my name represents my goals. Fascinating. You two really did your homework to find a suitable name for yourselves. Now, back to the issue at hand. What was your initial reaction to the destruction of the Bugger homeworlds? and the actions of Ender Wigan. I was honestly quite worried. All of the accidental tips you unavoidably receive when in a position of power, as well as my own research, all pointed to a serious threat of earthbound conflict. More rapid training schedules, discrepancies in military reports, they all pointed to one thing. The Russians were mobilizing for war. Wow. In the chaos after the buggers were defeated, the war would cause the collapse of the hegemonic government as we know it today. With use of nuclear weapons, I predict that it would have had a higher death toll than the first bugger invasion itself. How dreadful. Well, it certainly sounds like you dodged a bullet. How might we have uh, avoided it if it did actually, if something like this did actually happen? Despite my lack of love for the Russians, the peace treaty that helped to unify the world once again, imposed by your other guests here tonight, was the only real solution to this problem. Whoever had the first strike would have had a definite advantage. And the way things were going, the Warsaw Pact was certainly poised for an attack long before the North American hegemony was even aware of the threat. I think that we all, pr all praise for the Locke proposal. I am flattered, but truly, I only did what I believe is right. It was my responsibility. At any rate, I believe that we are avoiding the real issue here, the future of Ender. So Locke, what kind of position do you think a hero like Ender Wigan should be when he returns to Earth? Should he work for the IF, or just get into politics? What's your opinion? On the contrary, Mr. Marcus. It is a shame, but I don't think that Ender could come back to Earth at all. Oh. Imagine a political scramble to gain the approval of humanity's savior. Why, all major governments would turn into a popularity contest, with the one friendliest of Ender a guaranteed high approval rating. He doesn't deserve to be forced away from home, but I see no other solution. You're forgetting that we need him. Ender is the greatest military mind the world has ever produced. We need him to teach the next generation how to think like him. The buggers aren't the only ones out there. Preparation is vital to preservation. His knowledge may protect us from others, but I promise you that it will be a catalyst for internal conflict on Earth. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Gentlemen, please, let's keep this debate civilized. Now, the, I'm sure the IF will think of something, and the best course of action, in fact, uh, for what should be done with Indorwicken. So I have another question for you. What do you think should be done about the bugger worlds? Many people are suggesting expansion into them. In fact, there are colony ships leading right now. With politics on the earth and state like this, what do you think should be done? I must say, I think that expansion into space is not the wisest decision when our home is so in flux. Instead of pumping all this money and time into what could be a dead end, we need to strengthen the ties between nations here, where it matters. Humanity united is a force to be reckoned with, but segregated, we cannot hope to achieve what we need. I'm sorry to be here, but I'm running a very tight schedule, and due to complications, I'll have to make an early exit. I'll pray to excuse this unprofessional interruption. 
Although I greatly respect you and your efforts on many topics, Locke, I feel you're mistaken here. Many listeners already know about how I feel about the population limitation laws, and interplanetary colonization is the only way to solve the problem of overcrowding. You may be right to say that humanity needs to be united to be powerful, but expanding is truly the way to salvation. But, sir, why are you in such a frenzy to leave? Where are you? My people need me. I'm going to the Bugger Worlds myself. My ship leaves momentarily. This will be my last appearance for quite some time. D Demos Athens? Are, are you there? Demos Athens? Get Locke off the air. We need to end this quickly. Well, that's all for now, folks. Stay tuned for an exciting interview with Enter Wigan, the savior of the human race. But first, a message from our sponsors. This guitar doesn't sound quite right. Guitar polish. Welcome back to The Close-Up with Harold Marcus. Today I have a very special guest. Joining me is the Bugger Crusher, the Savior of Earth, the Battle School Prodigy, or you may know him as Ender Wigan. Ender is joining me through desk and civil chat. How are you doing, Ender? Do you okay, Harold? Now, the question that everyone wants the answers to, what did it feel like to destroy the Bugger Planet? Well, well, Harold, to tell you the truth, I didn't know what I was doing. What do you mean? I'm about to reveal something that not too many people know. I was tricked. Were you were tricked? Well, let me tell you the whole story. I was recruited six years ago by a member of the IF. They convinced me to dedicate my childhood to training to be a military commander. The training at this school, Battle School, was based off of games. We were divided into armies and put against each other. After leaving battle school, I was sent to commander school. Unsurprisingly, the training there was also based off of games. One day, I was told to go to the battle room on short notice at an unusual time. They told me that I had one last game to play. If I won, it would all end. I'd graduate battle school and move on to live a normal life. I was up against a very large enemy fleet. They outnumbered us 100 to 1. It may sound very familiar to some viewers. This, the, this last battle, it was no game. They tricked me into thinking I was destroying bits and memories so I would not feel compassion for the enemy, the enemies who, whose home planet I destroyed. So let me get this straight. Three tricked you into ending billions of lives? How does that make you feel? I don't know what to feel. I feel cheated. Lied to. Used. At the time, the IF knew they needed me not to feel. They needed me to give the order for that planet to be destroyed. So in a sense, you were a tool of the Yes, I was the strongest weapon. They had wore me down to the point where I just wanted the games to end. And since I thought it was a game, I did what I had to do to end Interesting. it. Interesting. Do you think your actions would have differed if you knew it was a real battle? Yes, I'm sure they would have. I'm not cold enough to wipe out an entire species. We would have learned, to learn so much from the buggers. At first, I had no idea about what to do about the feeling of guilt that plagued me. I went to the bugger home plan along with the very few, first few wave of colonizers. On a routine patrol, I spotted a rune. A rune that was somehow very familiar to me. I walked into it and up a tower. I felt the strangers to break through a mirror in said tower. Surprisingly, on the other side of the mirror, found a bugger queen, Pupa. It all became clear. The room was based off of a game I played in battle school. The buggers built it in advance because they knew it was coming. They knew it would destroy them. They knew it would want to reverse what I did, would do. And how did they find this all out? The Ansible. The long-range communication device that IF uses is basically a human attempt to mimic the way the buggers communicate. They easily tapped into it using their most personal thoughts to attract. I see. And um, what do you plan to do with this larva? I have assembled a team of IF explorers to seek out a planet similar in climate to the bugger homeworld. We destroyed their planet. It's our responsibility to repair the damage we inflicted, and possibly, in a couple thousand years, we can live peacefully with, peacefully with them and maybe even learn from them. Thank you, Ender. I'm glad that the world know what truly happened on that fateful day. Maybe this has also brought some closure to the century-long war that we have undergone with the Puckers. Now we can truly know peace. Join us next week to hear from the man that taught Enderwigan, Mazer Rackham. Thank you. This has been Tonight.
with Harold Marcus.